Kim Jong-hong, a courageous young firefighter, displayed remarkable valor in the face of daunting situations. On a fateful day, a towering structure was engulfed in flames, forcing Kim to make a difficult decision. He bravely leapt from the blazing edifice to rescue a frightened young girl. Although he experienced pain upon landing, he did not falter. With unwavering determination, he swiftly rose to his feet and ensured the girl's safety. Her relieved parents expressed their gratitude, yet the girl departed silently with her family. Kim's life took an unusual turn as the world around him assumed an unfamiliar essence, despite its unchanged appearance. Then, a voice called out his name. Turning around, he beheld a kindly-looking man and woman who imparted a startling revelation. He had passed away on April 28, 2017. Kim implored them to grant him a final meeting with his mother, but instead, they guided him into the realm of the afterlife. Beyond the forbidding gates of the Seven Trials, Kim encountered another guardian named Kong Rim. Daik Chun presented Kim with a special designation, dubbing him a paragon, due to his virtuous life and honorable death, a rarity in recent times. They elucidated that paragons possessed the highest likelihood of successfully navigating the Seven Trials within 49 days, possibly leading to rebirth. The first trial, known as the Hell of Murder, scrutinized Kim's life to assess whether he had caused harm or unjustly taken a life. He faced an accusation of abandoning a friend in a burning structure, resulting in the friend's demise. He was charged with manslaughter and potentially faced a 50-year sentence. However, Kong Rim came to Kim's defense, asserting that Kim had prioritized saving others before his friend, thereby acting heroically. The judge concurred, acknowledging Kim as a hero. Subsequently, the hell of indolence unfolded, initially appearing benign but harboring hidden perils. Queen Chigong presided over this trial, intent on discerning whether Kim had exhibited laziness or arrogance during his lifetime. The guardians recounted Kim's commendable deeds as a firefighter, yet his admission that financial gain motivated him incurred the queen's wrath. She accused him of excessive materialism, poised to impose punishment. Kong Rim and Haywin intervened, with Kong Rim explaining that Kim had faced numerous challenges beyond his firefighting duties. Kim toiled relentlessly, juggling numerous nocturnal jobs and even dedicating weekends to the ceaseless pursuit of employment. His dedication knew no bounds as he refrained from ever taking a respite. His unwavering commitment stemmed from a profound sense of duty towards his gravely ill mother and his younger brother, who harbored dreams of ascending to the position of a Supreme Court judge. In the midst of trying times, Kim's industrious efforts served as the lifeline that sustained his family. One pivotal day, Kong Rim, Kim's advocate, apprised the queen of the critical role Kim played in his family's survival, stressing that without his relentless endeavors, they might have succumbed to adversity. After contemplation, the queen recognized Kim's distinctiveness, acknowledging that he toiled not merely for pecuniary gain but, more importantly, to provide for his family. With her verdict rendered, they embarked on their next challenge. However, their journey took a perilous turn when they found themselves assailed by menacing creatures emerging from the depths of a forest. While they managed to evade the threat, their companion, Haiwan, surmised that these attacks were instigated by vengeful spirits, angered by the loss of a family member. These malevolent spirits cast a pall of misfortune over Kim's journey, fueling his apprehension for his ailing mother. Kong Rim elucidated that the sole means to quell this malevolence was to locate the deceased family member's remains and incinerate them, thereby extinguishing the wrathful spirit. Kim resolved to undertake a quest in search of his kin's mortal remains. In a bid to shield Kim from the predatory gazes of the monsters, they blindfolded him, guiding him toward their next trial, the Hell of Deceit. Here, Kim confronted judgment for his past transgressions of falsehood and harm inflicted upon others. He confessed to fabricating letters, one particularly striking instance involving the impersonation of a little girl's father to offer solace. Kim's motivation was rooted in his desire to provide succor, but he had failed to consider the subsequent heartache the truth would cause. As punishment, he suffered the removal of his tongue. Yet, in an unexpected turn, Daik Chan emerged as his advocate, revealing a series of counterfeit letters, this time directed at Kim's mother. These untruths had kindled hope within his mother during her hospitalization. Daik Chan contended that these falsehoods had facilitated healing and progress for those they had touched. The admiral, witnessing the joy these letters had brought, absolved Kim of all charges. Kong Rim made a visit to Kim's home, encountering his speechless mother. Offering his condolences, he discerned the spirit of Kim's brother within the wisps of candle smoke. 
Despite his efforts to glean answers about his brother's demise, the spirit eluded capture, prompting a pursuit. Ultimately, Kong Rim determined that it was in Kim's best interest to remain in the dark about his brother's passing, safeguarding their ongoing trials. Kim found solace in the belief that his mother and brother were well. Kong Rim pressed forward in his mission to locate and vanquish the vengeful spirit, while the group progressed toward their subsequent challenge. During their odyssey, Kim shared a poignant memory with Dayak Chan concerning a rice cooker he had intended to present to his mother. Within its confines, he had concealed a letter that unveiled the truth behind his lies, expressing his love and yearning for her. Their journey led them to the hell of injustice, where souls faced retribution for failing to aid others in the mortal realm. Kim, owing to his selflessness and sacrifices, was exempted from this trial, continuing on a path defined by benevolence. Kong Rim embarked on a journey to a military facility in search of information regarding Su Hong, Kim's brother. To his astonishment, he uncovered a perplexing revelation. It was alleged that Su Hong had deserted the army, but this appeared inconceivable, as Su Hong was on the brink of receiving an honorable discharge, having served as a commander responsible for investigating army desertions. Determined to unravel the truth surrounding Su Hong's disappearance, Kong Rim engaged in a conversation with Lieutenant Park, the officer overseeing Su Hong's final assignments. Kong Rim couldn't shake the feeling that Lieutenant Park was concealing a significant secret. Subsequently, he approached Sergeant Don Young, who had been with Su Hong on the fateful night of his vanishing. What set Kong Rim apart was his unique ability to traverse time. Utilizing this extraordinary gift, he journeyed into the past, delving into the night when Su Hong vanished. It became evident that Su Hong had been Don Young's sole companion amidst the rigors of army life. While others ridiculed Don Young for his reticence, Su Hong stood by him, comforting him with a special song they had composed together to navigate the hardships they faced. Don Young was gripped by anxiety and fear, fiddling with his rifle due to his dread of being without Su Hong. Tragically, a gunshot accidentally discharged, striking Su Hong. Don Young, in his panic, contacted Lieutenant Park. Instead of reporting the accident, Lieutenant Park instructed Don Young to conceal the incident, convincing him that it aligned with Su Hong's wishes. Shockingly, Su Hong did not perish that night. His supposed friends had buried him alive to conceal the truth. When Kong Rim discovered Su Hong's remains, he faced a daunting decision. Rather than concealing the evidence, he chose to assist Su Hong in finding solace in the afterlife. He sought to rectify the injustice that Su Hong had endured. Recalling Su Hong's fervent desire to ride a cable car, Kong Rim was reminded of their profound friendship. Their path intersected with Diop Chin, one of the guardians who had once been human on Earth. She harbored resentment over the guardian's ability to forget their past lives. An altercation ensued, revealing the grim fate of Kim's brother as a vengeful spirit. Kong Rim endeavored to locate Su Hong's spirit and ended up in a club where an inebriated Don Young was present. A dramatic pursuit unfolded, ultimately resulting in Kong Rim capturing Su Hong's soul. Kong Rim implored Su Hong to release his anger and aid in his brother's trial. Unexpectedly, Su Hong expressed enduring resentment toward his brother, whom he hadn't seen in 15 years. Simultaneously, Don Young visited Kim's mother's residence and left behind a map leading to Su Hong's buried body. Kong Rim watched as Su Hong contemplated drastic actions. Just as Don Young was on the verge of self-harm, Su Hong intervened, proposing a deal to Kong Rim, saving Don Young's life in exchange for his cooperation. Kong Rim acquiesced, though he cautioned Su Hong about the repercussions of interfering with the world of the living. With Kong Rim's assistance, Su Hong performed the special song they had composed, substantiating his identity. He forgave Don Young and encouraged him to move forward. As their journey continued, Kim and the two guardians confronted a challenging trial centered on betrayal. However, an unforeseen event spared Kim from enduring the trial. Subsequently, they encountered a vacuum sinkhole that transported them to a realm where violence was met with punishment. Kong Rim's actions in the living world had unforeseen consequences, thrusting them into a perilous situation, where they confronted King Jin Wang. In this dire realm, Kim faced judgment for his mistreatment of his younger brother, who had suffered from insufficient food. Kim's brother had never forgiven him, and Kim had never offered an apology. The guardian sought leniency, but King Jin Wang delivered a severe sentence. Kong Rim endeavored to unite the other guardians in an effort to alter Kim's fate. However, Hai Wen, one of the guardians, remained uncertain, exacerbating the tension among them. 
Chan had requested a unique trial, which was granted. This distinctive trial involved revisiting past transgressions alongside new wrongdoings. If the individual was found guilty of these combined offenses, they would face more severe consequences. Additionally, their guardians would forfeit their positions and privileges. Subsequently, they proceeded to another trial referred to as the Hell of Filial Impiety, where they assessed the extent to which people had fulfilled their duties toward their parents. In this context, Kim confessed to the guardians that he had not been a dutiful son. His mother had been seriously ill, and they had no one else to turn to for help. Kim and his brother had endured hunger and suffering, and he feared they would all have a bleak future. Therefore, 15 years ago, one fateful night, he attempted to put an end to their suffering. He tried to harm his mother while she was asleep, but his brother woke up and intervened. In the struggle, Kim injured his brother and fled, overwhelmed by guilt. His plan had been to administer sleeping pills and their food the following day to end their suffering permanently. Kim never saw his mother or brother again and only communicated with her through letters. Wan was incensed because Kong Rim had assisted Su Hong in reclaiming his soul. Su Hong had encountered his mother in a subterranean location and inquired about her son. She couldn't speak, so she conveyed a distressing message seeking assistance. Lieutenant Park attempted to prevent her and even pushed her, provoking Su Hong's anger. She showed Lieutenant Park a map, which only fueled his fury, causing him to push her down, leading to her being put in an ambulance. Upon witnessing these events, Su Hong became enraged and summoned a powerful tornado to pursue Lieutenant Park. This unleashed a horde of sand demons that attacked Kim and the Guardians. Kong Rim, unable to save Lieutenant Park from Su Hong, called upon Haiwan for assistance, resulting in a fierce battle. Kim found himself being engulfed by the Earth's surface. When Kong Rim and Haiwan successfully rescued Lieutenant Park, Su Hong witnessed his brother being consumed by the sand. At that moment, he decided to relinquish his desire for revenge and reclaim his own soul. Immediately thereafter, the final trial commenced. King Yomra, the underworld's ruler, cited Kim's attempt to harm his mother 15 years prior as grounds for punishment. Chun implored the king not to punish Kim, arguing that his mother was unaware of the incident. However, the king presented a magical mirror that revealed Kim's mother had been aware of everything. She had feigned sleep to ensure a better life for her children, even though it filled her with sorrow. Kim felt profound remorse and willingly sought punishment. The tribunal detailed all of Kim's transgressions, but then a sudden earthquake shook the scene. Through the magic mirror, they witnessed Su Hong appearing in his mother's dream. He informed her that he had become a judge in the afterlife and had forgiven his brother. For the first time, his mother spoke and admitted that it was her fault for everything. Consequently, the king concluded that there were no charges to be filed, as Kim had been forgiven in the living world. He decreed that Kim could be reborn. Kim expressed gratitude to Chun and departed for the living world. As he left, Kong Rim gifted Kim's mother a rice cooker and a heartfelt letter. She read the letter and smiled. Thus, the story concluded.